Hmm. Wait, that's actually so much better than I expected. Honestly, if it wasn't for this video, I probably would not have tried that. I'm so glad I did. Hi everyone, in today's video, we are doing trying every Asian food product from Trader Joe's part two. We already did a part one to this video where we tried a bunch of their awesome Asian food products such as their tteokbokki, lamb vindaloo, orange chicken, mochi, etc, etc. But there are so many Asian food products at Trader Joe's that we have to do a part two. So today we're gonna try as many as we can. Also, this video is sponsored by Squarespace, but more on that later. And yeah, if you guys are liking these Trader Joe's videos, make sure you hit the thumbs up because that lets me know that you wanna see more like this. And without further ado, do, let's roll the Trader Joe's footage. Thank you. First up, we have these scallion pancakes, and these are the Korean style scallion pancakes. I've actually gotten these many times before, so they're kind of a regular Trader Joe's item in our household. They have a pan frying instruction as well as baking instructions, but I usually like to air fry them. So we're gonna go ahead and pan fry one of them and air fry the other one and see which one is better. So to pan fry, it says add a small amount of vegetable oil to a skillet and heat to medium, cook for about two to three minutes, turn halfway through and press with the spatula to make pancakes golden and crispy. And then for the air fry version, we're just gonna throw it in the air fryer at 400 for 10 minutes, flipping halfway. All right, so we have our air fried scallion pancake and our pan fried scallion pancake, and they both sound so crispy. Just listen. I feel like the air fried one sounds more crispy and crunchy, while the pan fried one definitely still sounds crispy, but more of like a fluffy, thicker crispy, if that makes sense. <laughs> Let's go ahead and try the air fried version first. That is definitely a crunchy crispy. <laughs> it's so good though. I feel like I could have left it in for a little less, maybe eight minutes, or depending on your preference, I feel like you can just adjust with the air fryer. You can definitely see all those different vegetables in there, like the carrots, the scallions. I get such a strong scallion flavor, which is really, really nice. Usually when you order these at the restaurants, they would come with like a little dipping sauce, which I feel like that might be a good addition. Trader Joe's, if you're looking for any way to improve it, add a little dipping sauce. Let's go ahead and try the pan fried version now. Mmm. Wow, it's so interesting how much of a difference the two preparation methods can make. This one is definitely more of that lighter crispy on the outside, but the inside is much more doughy. And this one, I can get so much more of that dough flavor. Still get a lot of the scallion flavor as well, of course. Honestly, between them both, they're both really good. I feel like I still would gravitate towards doing it in the air fryer because it's easier. You don't really have to like watch it. You just throw it in there, flip it once, and it's done. I also feel like the air fried version is less greasy, and I feel like the pan fried version is a little bit more like oiliness to it. I feel like they're both good though, and if you try it either way, it's gonna be good. So definitely would recommend. All right, next up, we have these Korean style beef short ribs, also known as galbi. I remember trying this a few years ago, and I remember it being pretty good. And honestly, it's such a good price for over one pound of short rib. To cook it, we preheat the skillet to medium heat, cook each side of the rib for two to three minutes until brown or your preference. They actually recommend grilling for the best results, but we don't have a grill. So we're just gonna do the pan frying skillet method. So here we have our cooked Korean style beef short ribs. Oh, it just smells super beefy and sweet. You can really smell that marinade on it in true Korean fashion. Let's go ahead and cut them up with scissors. Oh my gosh, they look absolutely amazing. Look at the glistening on it. You could even see that marbling coming through too. All right, let's go ahead and give it a try. Mmm. I can't believe this is from Trader Joe's. It's seriously so good. I mean, if you go to like a really quality Korean restaurant, you can definitely get better ones, of course, but this is such an affordable option. It's super good. The marinade is so authentic. I feel like it has like a little sweetness to it, savoriness, and it just complements the beef short rib so well. This would be absolutely perfect over some plain white rice, or if you get little lettuce wrap type things like you can do at Korean barbecue, you add a little lettuce, you add some galbi, also kimchi, get some garlic on there. That would be the perfect bite. If you guys see this at Trader Joe's, definitely get it. All right, next, staying on with the Korean theme, we have the kimchi and tofu soup. I have not heard really great things about this, but I'm gonna try to keep an open mind. So it says, remove outer packaging and empty contents into a saucepan, heat on low, covered for 10 to 12 minutes or to an internal temperature of 165 Fahrenheit, stirring frequently. Let's stand one to two minutes before serving. All right, so we have our kimchi tofu stew here. I'm just gonna eat it from the pot so I don't have to wash an extra bowl. 
but it looks very interesting. Definitely doesn't look like any kimchi soup that I've had before. I actually grew up going to Tofu House at least once a week with my family. It was like one of our go-to places. So I'm pretty familiar with sundubu and this does not look like sundubu. I mean, inside here you can definitely see kimchi, the tofu, and there's also a lot of purple rice as well. And I even see a little mushroom in here. Oh no! <laughs> Of course I know kimchi is supposed to be sour, like it has an acidity to it, but this one, the sourness just tastes super off for some reason. Ooh, that does not taste right. The rice just completely falls apart in your mouth because it's so mushy, so it doesn't add that much texture. The tofu is definitely like a firmer tofu, but if you get kimchi tofu soup, they always use silken tofu. I don't know where they were going with this. <laughs> I definitely say skip on this one if you see it at Trader Joe's. All right, next up, we have these Taiwanese green onion pancakes. If you guys know me, that is literally one of my favorite Taiwanese street foods in the whole world, specifically this one stall in Taiwan. They have the best, flakiest, chewiest scallion pancakes in the whole world. I miss Taiwan so much. But anyway, we're gonna actually pan fry and air fry them to see which version we like better. To pan fry it, it says to remove all packaging, heat one teaspoon of oil in a pan over medium heat and add frozen pancake. Cook until golden brown on both sides. Drain briefly on absorbent paper. And then to air fry it, I'm gonna air fry it at like 400 for about five minutes or so. I've never actually air fried them before, so I'm gonna go with the flow and see what happens. So here we have our Taiwanese green onion pancakes. This is the pan fried version and this is the air fried version. The air fried version turned out very interesting, but first let's Let's talk about the pan fried version. I tried doing this technique that I see them do at the Taiwan food stalls that have green onion pancakes where they use two things to kind of fluff it up and get all the layers. And I feel like it does look a little flakier. And then for the air fried one, I air fried it for five minutes and it was looking very floppy. So I put it back in for a few minutes and now it's... I really don't know what's going on here. I might have messed this up. But let's go ahead and try the pan fried version first. Mmm, definitely has a nice crispy layer on the outside. On the inside, it has a nice chewy texture as well. You can definitely see all those flaky layers there. In terms of the taste, I feel like I could use a bit more flavor. On its own, it's a bit bland. If there was a little sauce or if you put it with an egg and some chili oil, that would be really good. But yeah, on its own, it's a bit bland. But I still think it's definitely worth a try, especially if you don't have Asian supermarkets near you. Now for this uh, air fried version. I'm kind of nervous to try this, but let's go ahead. Definitely over air fried that. I feel like five minutes wasn't enough. And then I think I added like three more minutes. So maybe like six minutes might be good. <laughs> but honestly, if you don't think of it as a green onion pancake, it's not bad. It's kind of just like a very crispy cracker that's green onion-y. If you use this as like a base for like a tostada or something, maybe that could be good. But yeah, if you guys have an air frying method that works with this, please leave it in the comments. All right, next up, we have this Kung Pao chicken. I feel like it's a pretty popular item at Trader Joe's as well. So we heat one teaspoon of vegetable oil in a large non-stick skillet. Add chicken and stir fry until warm and golden, about six to eight minutes. Add vegetables and continue to stir until they begin to soften and color, about three minutes. Once vegetables warm through, add sauce and stir to cover and warm. Add peanuts and toss for one minute longer. While that's cooking up, let's take a second to talk about today's sponsor, Squarespace. Making a website is super intimidating. Like, you have to hire someone to build it for you, get a designer to make it look nice and professional, and then on top of that, you have to worry about getting your website to do everything you want it to do like host your blog posts or manage scheduling, like calls, appointments, or reservations for your business. But Squarespace makes it so easy because it's like a one-stop platform for all your website needs and they have so many templates for you to choose from. And all you have to do is click the template you want and boom, it's right there for you. For example, I was hiring in the past few months and was able to have full control of the application process on my own website instead of having to go to a third-party website. So if you have anything you're passionate about and you wanna start a blog or build a business, then let Squarespace make Make things easy for you. Click the link in the description or go to squarespace.com slash for a free trial and 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video and let's go check back on the food. All right, so here we have our Kung Pao chicken. It looks and smells really good. You can see those peanuts in there and the vegetables and of course those big chunks of chicken. Mmm. Mm. So when I first was chewing, I definitely got like a savory, tangy flavor from the sauce. And then I got the crunch from the peanut, which was actually very, very good. And then I even got a tiniest, tiniest, tiniest kick at the end, like a little bit of heat. I also got a little bit of vegetable. I think it was a water chestnut, so it had a different kind of crunchy texture to it. I really love how juicy and moist the chicken is. So incredibly tender, has really nice flavor. Oh, this would be perfect over a hot steaming bowl of rice. For me, Personally, 
I definitely would like to add a little bit more spice to it and then it would be perfect. Next up, we have these chicken gyoza pot stickers. I usually get the pork ones and I know those are good. So I decided to get the chicken ones today to try out for you guys. So we preheat one to two tablespoons of oil in a large skillet, add frozen gyoza and saute over medium high heat for four minutes or until bottoms turn lightly golden. Add four tablespoons of water, reduce heat, cover and steam until water evaporates and gyoza bottoms turn golden brown. Serve immediately with your favorite soy or dipping sauce. All right, so here we have our chicken gyoza pot stickers and look at that golden crispy bottom. This is like my ideal crispy bottomness. Goldenness? Crispiness. Just listen to how crispy that is. Mm, mm. I love that crispy bottom. It's like when you bite into the dumpling skin, at first like soft and chewy, and then you get that really nice crispiness. It's just such a nice contrast. The filling is nice and juicy. You have that chicken in there as well as the vegetables. Definitely doesn't have like a super strong flavor, but it's also not bland at the same time. I feel like if you made a little nice dipping sauce with some soy sauce, vinegar, chili oil, that would go super well with this. All right, so next up, we have these Thai banana fritters. They actually look super good in the photo. It says preheat the air fryer to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Remove all packaging and place fritters into the air fryer in a single layer. Heat for four to six minutes or until heated through. Remove from air fryer and let stand for one to two minutes before serving. Fritters will crisp on cooling. All right, so we have our Thai banana fritters here. They definitely aren't as crispy as I would have expected. So maybe I should have air fried them longer, but they said they would crisp when cooling, so I wasn't sure. Also, some of them look kind of like fish and chips, which I think is funny, but anyway. Okay, this one is definitely not crispy enough. Maybe I should pop it back in the air fryer for a little bit because it's not crispy enough. BRB. Okay, after air frying them a little bit longer, they're still not at the crispiness that we want, but at least they're hotter, so let's try it. Mmm. Okay, this would actually be really good if it was crispy. It's still good, even though it's not crispy, but it would have been a million times better if it was crispy. I really like the battering on the outside. It's light and fluffy. It really much reminds me of being at a fair and eating all the fried foods at the fair because the batter kind of tastes like funnel cake or kind of like a donut. It's like this fried sweet dough taste that's really nice with the banana. You get that nice sesame flavor from the dough and there's a sweetness to it, but it's not super, super sweet. But then the inside and the banana, it adds a little bit of a tartness to it. And the bananas actually aren't super strong in the banana flavor because you know how bananas usually have super strong flavor like if you ever packed a banana with your lunch as a kid and put it in the same bag i feel like it would always just make the other things taste like banana but that is definitely not the case here it's not a super super strong banana flavor if you guys can figure out how to crisp this up i think it would be a winner so next up we have this vegan thai green curry with tofu sheets vegetables and jasmine rice i was super super intrigued by this because i've tried a lot of trader joe's indian curry but i've never tried their thai curry before remove tray from the box, carefully puncture top of tray three to four times with a fork to vent. Place the tray in the microwave and cook for three minutes. Stir gently and cook for an additional two to three minutes or until internal temperature reaches 165 Fahrenheit. Oh my god, you guys. I wish you could smell this right now because it literally smells incredible. The rice actually looks quite fluffy, especially for microwavable rice. All right, let's go ahead and pour some on the rice. Mmm. Wait, that's actually so much better than I expected. I remember when I picked this up at the Trader Joe's, I was like, I mean, it sounds good, but is it gonna be good? Because I feel like some things are really hit or miss, but wow, it's so flavorful. It just really has those nice high green curry aromatic spices, and there's like a little bit of a kick to it as well. Mm. It's really nice because the vegetables add this nice texture to it, and that tofu skin, it does actually have a little bit of a meat substitute kind of vibe to it. I would definitely get this again, but for me, since I'm not vegan, I would add a little bit of meat. But yeah, honestly, if it wasn't for this video, I probably would not have tried that. I'm so glad I did. All right, next up, staying on the curry theme, we have the Korma Fish Curry with Basmati Rice. This is definitely something that I've bought from Trader Joe's time and time again. But also, if you guys missed part one, I actually reviewed so many of the Indian foods in part one as well. So definitely go check that out. So to prepare, we remove outer packaging and puncture two to three times. Heat on high for three minutes. Carefully lift one corner of film and stir gently. Heat for an additional one to one and a half minutes and serve immediately. All right, so here we have our Korma Fish Curry curry all heated up. It literally <laughs> smells so good. Let's go ahead and add some of that curry onto the rice. Gotta get a piece of fish in there. 
Mm. Man, Trader Joe's knows how to do their curries. Apparently, I feel like every curry I've tried from them is so good. And this one is no different. It has a nice like kind of tomato-y, savory sauce. The fish is nice and soft and flaky. It pairs so perfectly with the rice. This one doesn't really have any kind of spiciness to it in the sense that it doesn't have any heat, but there are a lot of aromatic fragrant spices in the curry. Honestly, Trader Joe's knows how to do curries right. These are both so good and would highly recommend you try both of them. Next up, we have this chicken fried rice with stir fried rice, vegetables, seasoned dark chicken meat, and eggs. It says heat approximately one tablespoon of vegetable oil in a non-stick frying pan or wok. Cook on medium heat, stirring occasionally for four to five minutes or until cooked thoroughly. Pour into a bowl and serve. So here we have our chicken fried rice. It actually looks pretty good. There's a lot of different kind of vegetables in there like carrots, peppers, onion, peas, as well as egg and chicken. It's definitely not bad. I like how the rice has a little bit of a chew and a bite to it. Chicken is nice and juicy and the balance of the flavors of the fried rice is pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and add some sriracha on it because when I was in college and I used to make fried rice all the time, I would always put hella sriracha and that would make the fried rice so much better. Also, can we talk about how sriracha is in like a shortage right now? Never thought there would be a sriracha shortage. Oh my God, I love sriracha. Mm, mm. If you guys get this, you have to try adding sriracha to it. This really takes me back to college days. All right, so next up, we have these ta siu bao Chinese style pork buns. And I'm really excited about this because I've never tried these from Trader Joe's. Boil water in a pot, place the steamer pan on top of the boiling pot, place product inside steamer pan and cover, steam for approximately six to eight minutes. So here are our ta siu bao. They actually feel quite soft and fluffy. Always gotta remember to peel off this paper. Sometimes I forget and then I eat paper. Mmm, mmm. The bun is nice and soft and fluffy. And the pork inside definitely has like a nice, almost like pork belly type flavor. And then it's also a little bit sweet because Tasu Bao usually has a little sweetness to it. I'm pretty impressed, actually. The bun I feel like has a little bit of doughiness slash gumminess to it a little bit. But other than that, I feel like this is very solid. So next up, we have these crispy, crunchy mochi rice nuggets. We have the normal version, which is just plain. And then we have this version, which is the spicy version. Usually when you think of mochi, you think like soft and chewy and stretchy, but these are like little cracker type things. Oh, looks so like fluffy. They all actually have very interesting shapes to them too. Wow, those are so crunchy. They're not like the crispy crunchy. They're like very like crunch crunchy, if that makes any sense. And when you bite down, you definitely get a really strong like rice flavor. Kind of like a rice cracker, but not really because the texture is completely different. It's very like fluffy crunchy. I don't know how to explain it. And it kind of like gets stuck in your teeth as well. They seem very like lightly salted. You get a little hint of that saltiness. I feel like they're pretty plain and simple, but let's go ahead and try the spicy version. So they pretty much do look the same as the other ones, but just with that seasoning on top. Oh, whoa, it actually smells kind of taco-like. <laughs> I don't know, like a Mexican spice. There definitely is a spice there, but it is not like a Japanese Asian spice. I feel like it is kind of like a Mexican spice almost. You know, I'm usually the kind of person that if there's a spicy version of something, I'm gonna like that one more because I love spicy. But this, I feel like the spice and like the rice flavor of the plain nuggets, they just don't mesh together well. So I feel like this could be good if they use a different kind of spice, but I feel like the spice mix they did choose, it just doesn't pair well together in my opinion. If you're gonna try one of these, I think definitely try the plain one. Next up, we have these chicken spring rolls white meat chicken with basil garlic and ginger I hope it's not too strong on the ginger because you guys know how I feel about ginger so thaw in microwave for 30 seconds on high add 15 seconds for each additional roll heat one tablespoon of vegetable oil in a heavy skillet add spring rolls and turn frequently for three to four minutes until golden crisp and warm through okay so here we have our chicken spring rolls they sound so nice and crispy all right here we go cheers Mmm. Mm. First of all, that is so hot and crispy on the outside. And the crisp is so nice because it's like a light crisp. It just has a very thin layer of that like egg roll wrapper. Perfectly golden brown, perfectly crispy. And then the inside is filled with so much meat. Like one of the first thoughts that was running through my mind when I ate this was like, whoa, that's meaty. <laughs> they actually pack a lot of chicken in there. And then you also see the vegetables as well. Oh, 
I just got some of that ginger taste, but I also got a little bit of that basil flavor as well. Really like that bright freshness from the basil. I feel like these would be so good dipped in like a sweet chili sauce. I mean, let's be real, all egg rolls taste good in a sweet chili sauce. I feel like that would be super good with this. All right, next up, we have these steamed pork and ginger soup dumplings. These I remember trying a few years ago, but it's been a while. From what I remember, it was pretty decent, especially for like microwavable instant soup dumplings. So to prepare it, we cut one corner of the bag to allow steam to escape, place tray directly into microwave and heat on high for 145 to two minutes. Let sit one minute before removing from microwave, open bag along seams with caution. All right, so here we have our microwavable soup dumplings from Trader Joe's. It's just so crazy because I feel like growing up, there wasn't that many restaurants that had soup dumplings. And to think that now they have like instant ones. Yeah, that's just wild to me. They have these little like sauce divots in the packaging. So I went ahead and added some black vinegar. I'm gonna eat it the non-traditional soup dumpling way and just pop it in my mouth because I'm too lazy to go and get a soup spoon and then bite a little hole and then pour out the soup and then you know the whole process. So we're just gonna go all in one. It actually is very soupy and juicy. I can tell there's definitely a decent amount of soup. Let me just go ahead and bite a little hole so I can show you guys how much soup is exactly in there. Wow, yeah, that's actually a decent amount of soup. The flavor of the pork is nice and savory and umami. It's legitimately so juicy in there. I do taste a little bit of that ginger, but it's not too bad. Judging by the looks of the skin, I thought it looks pretty doughy, maybe kind of like thick. It might be a little stiff or chewy, but it's actually really, really nice. It's pretty thin. I'm actually quite impressed by that. Obviously, it's better if you go to like a local restaurant, but for instant soup dumplings, two minutes in the microwave, definitely pick these up at Trader Joe's. All right, so last but not least, we have some dessert. If you guys don't know the backstory, when I heard this was coming out, I literally called Trader Joe's every single day for like two weeks asking if any of them had it. And I eventually got my hands on some, but I think a lot of Trader Joe's have them in stock now because I see them almost every time I go to Trader Joe's. This version is their cold brew coffee and boba coconut non-dairy frozen dessert with tapioca pearls. That is a long name. <laughs> So satisfying. <laughs> also pro tip, if you guys get these, definitely let it sit out for like five to 10 minutes so that it can get a little softer. Otherwise the boba will be probably on the harder side. You can see we got a little piece of boba right there. Let's give it a try. Mm. I forgot how strong that coffee flavor is. It's actually so strong. This will wake you right up. Boba has a nice chew to it. It's definitely not the same texture that you're gonna get from boba that's in a drink because that kind of boba is very chewy and bouncy, like a bouncy kind of chew. And this one is chewy, but it doesn't have that same kind of like bouncy chew that boba usually does. But of course, if you freeze real boba, it's gonna get really hard and like rock solid. So whatever they use to make the boba in this, it's probably more like a mochi. So that way it can stay kind of chewy. The boba in this and the coffee flavor works really Really well together and considering that this is coconut non-dairy it's actually decently creamy i mean look at that texture plus the cold brew flavor is so strong that you can't taste that like coconut moving on this one is their black tea and boba coconut non-dairy frozen dessert with tapioca pearls immediately this one looks so different from the coffee one the color is lighter but also there's these swirl looking things in it so i wonder what that's about Hmm. The black tea flavor, even though you can taste it, it is more on the mild side. I've definitely had tea flavored ice creams that had stronger tea flavor. And considering how strong the coffee flavor is in the cold brew version, I would definitely expect the black tea counterpart to also be strong in the tea flavor. The boba is like the same consistency as the one in the coffee one. Out of both of these, I think I still prefer the coffee version more. But if any of you guys have tried both of these, let me know in the comments below which one you prefer more because I'm definitely curious. I feel like it's a personal preference thing. And that's all the items we're gonna try in today's Trader Joe's video. Let me know what other items I should try from Trader Joe's in the comments. And also don't forget to check out Squarespace. The link will be in the description. And yeah, if you guys like this video, make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell so you get notified when I upload. Give this video a thumbs up. And here's today's comment shout out. Thank you so much for your support. And if you want to be in the next video's comment shout out, make sure you comment something down below. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!